Good morning, everybody. Uneducated economist here. So it looks like the bullwhip effect is beginning to hit the automobile market. Now, this is something that I had predicted quite a while ago when there was a shortage of vehicles taking place due to the chip shortage that had been taking place globally across all automakers out there. And they were continuing to make vehicles even though they didn't have all the parts to complete them. Well, then all the parts to complete them started to flow in and the massive orders that had been taking place for vehicles because of the vehicle shortage that had happened caused automakers to go into mass production, which then now has a lot of inventory within the market. This is total bullwhip effect happening. We're starting to see the prices of new vehicles come down. I have an article down in the description that is talking about how Tesla has now knocked, what, 25% off some of their vehicles, off their brand new vehicles. I mean, holy moly, talk about a major discount. There is a deflationary aspect that is beginning to hit the automakers. Now, when you think about what is really taking place out here, when you see it happening, like, it's not just a manipulation of prices that caused things to go up. It was a breakdown in the supply chain. And now this is something that I had seen quite dramatically within the lumber market. It's kind of what made me famous here on YouTube. Now with lumber, things had really equalized quite, you know, we found that equilibrium within the market quite quickly. I mean, it only took a couple of years. Now, when it comes to other parts of the market, it's going to take many, many years. It could take, who knows, even into you know a decade in order to find the equilibrium from the supply chain breakdown that had taken place during the pandemic. So now, when we look at some of these articles that I leave down in the description, look at the freight, the freight liners, the ships that haul cars from one country to another. These things are now plugged full, so much so, so much so that these things are plugged full, like there's no capacity left within this particular freight industry, right, from shipping, that they are now transporting vehicles within containers, right? Now, I know this isn't something that is new. They've done this in the past, but they're doing it because they are now running out of, compa of capacity on the, what they refer to as roll on, roll off, I believe, um, vessels that are out there. So now you think about it, when there was a huge backup in LA, right, at the port of LA with a hundred freighters sitting off the coast of LA, waiting to get unloaded, what was taking place at the same time? There was shortages happening, right? As that stuff started to flow through, we started finding things like TV and exercise equipment and stuff like that began to fall in price. Well, we're going to experience the same thing within automakers, within the automobiles. Okay? I mean, we experienced it in lumber. You saw it happening in things like TVs. And now we're going to start finding it in things like cars. And so if you look at the article, the article was talking more about like how these vessels are full right and that there is going to be more of these particular f ships these these particular freight liners coming online in 2024 see this is due to the orders that were taking place right you think about it if you're running out of capacity what do you need more ships so you start putting orders in for more ships right so we're starting to see the bull up effects start to land within the ships themselves that transport vehicles <clears throat> I mean, you think about it, here once the vehicles start to really flood the market and the orders for vehicles start to fall, are you really going to need all these ships that are going to be coming online at the same time? People are really not going to be buying a whole lot of cars right? or ordering new cars. I shouldn't say they wouldn't be buying cars. I'm just ordering new ones. They say that there's going to be 5 million, I think is one of the articles was saying, 5, me 5 million unsold vehicles that are going to have to get discounted in order to move them off the lot. That's what the prediction is coming here at the end of 2023 and into 2024. I mean, you put these things together and it seems pretty obvious to me that there is going to be issues all throughout the early part of 2024. I mean, you think about it, the bond liquidity issue that the Treasury has talked about buying back their own bonds coming into 2024. 
I'm only assuming that's because the you know the demand for cash is going to be so extreme out there that the interest rates that people are going to have to pay in order to get a loan is going to be quite high and so they're going to be cashing in on treasuries and if they can't find a buyer the treasury is going to step up and be that buyer I mean that's kind of what I see I know other people might you know call it a little differently but that's the way I'm seeing it go down and you can only see it you know by the story that you tell and so when I look at like things like what's happening here with the shipping industry looking to build more vessels to deal with the overcapacity of cars that are happening right now knowing that there is going to be an oversupply of vehicles coming into the future that only you know leads me to believe that these ships are going to be in oversupply <clears throat> overcapacity come 2024 or into 2024 sometime when they come online okay it's just like, I mean, I don't know how you're going to use that information for your benefit. It's just one of the things that I'm just predicting right now because I can see it happening. I know a lot of people are more interested in probably what the car prices are going to do. But again, to me, this is all, you know, global economics is going to be telling of what's going to happen in the future. And that's what I see happening with this, you know, with this particular market. Just by the, you know, some of the articles and some of the things that I'm reading that's happening within shipping. And then some of the articles talking about what's going on with the car automakers and dealers right now. You know, it's like, you know, a lot of people... I've even been asked this recently, like, you know, how do I handle my life? You know, how do I deal with some of these aspects of my life? I got this going on, you know, I'm earning this much money. I have this much in bills. You know, people ask me all the time, what was it? What is it that I do? And I'm thinking to myself, I have no idea what you're supposed to do. I mean, what is it that I'm supposed to do? I mean, that's what we're all out here doing on, on YouTube, watching these videos, making these videos, studying, you know, these economic theories and ideas and articles and events in order to come up with the best solutions for ourselves. That's really what we're up to here. Yeah. And so when I read articles like the ones I'm seeing down below, I'm thinking, man, if you're in market for a new vehicle, because, you know, I would love to have a new Camaro. I'm thinking your buying opportunity is coming. You can see it happening. The Federal Reserve has promised to raise interest rates more and they're going to keep interest rates elevated for a significant amount of time. That is going to be very big pressure on the consumer. At the same time, there's a flood of cars coming into the market. You can see it because of the flood of ships that are, you know, over capacity right now. So much so that they're now hauling cars in containers. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's obvious, right? I mean, this didn't have a, you know, this isn't like, you know, some kind of like far off, you know, conspiracy theory or something like that. It's just simply the bullwhip effect. You had a shortage of vehicles out there. You had a huge demand for vehicles. You had prices elevate to an extreme high. And you had the automakers out there going, yeah, I want to take advantage of those high prices. The next thing you know, you had a bunch of flooded or a flood of vehicles start to come into the market you know you think about it there's some, something very similar like this could happen within the within the housing market i mean really right now the demand for houses at this price is falling right like the demand part of it people don't want to pay this price they simply can't pay the price i shouldn't say they don't want to it's just that they can't right so the amount of buyers who are coming into the market are falling well if the the amount of buyers who are coming into the market is dropping, then why would people want to bring inventory into less buyers? They wouldn't want to do that. So what ends up happening, right? Less inventory comes into the market, and if there's less inventory, prices start to rise. Pretty soon, if prices start to rise, the people who build houses are going to say, like, man, this is ungodly high. Like, how is it that we cannot build houses when prices are this elevated? And then they're going to get back into the market. See, there's it's the same thing that happens out there with anything, right? If you have a if you have a breakdown in the amount of availability out there, and yet you have a group that are going to want this. Now, regardless if they can pay for it or not, regardless if they can afford it, they're going to want it, right? And because of the availability being diminishing, the want for it increases. 
think about it that way. It's not a matter of supply and demand. I look at like, how is it that we're supposed to, you know, fix the affordability problem? They talk about interest rates and talk about, you know, how it is that they can, you know, provide loans without down payments and stuff like that. This is not, this is not providing more homes, right? There's a certain amount of people out there and there's a certain amount of homes, right? And there's no way that you can adjust that level with interest rates. The only way you can do it is either get rid of the people, right? Or you add more supply of homes. That's it. Those are the, that's it, right? Everything else is just some sort of far off concept of being able to manipulate the situation with, you know, loans and interest rates or, you know, providing, you know, availability to a certain group and not others or something like that. Like, I mean, everything else is a manipulation tactic. But if you have a certain amount of people who want homes and you only have a certain amount of homes, guess what? Only a certain amount of people are going to get a home. Right. Unless you can provide more homes, period. That's it. I got to go to work. Uneducated economist, you let me know.